Tony from freshcatmushrooms.com and we're going to be growing some shiitake mushrooms. Now I got these blocks of shiitake that actually inoculated almost seven weeks ago um, and they're totally ready to go. If you look at them they're completely colonized and they're consolidated quite well and if you look closely you can actually see there's uh, little kind of blobs of mycelium that are kind of turning brown um, which is kind of the precursor to pins and that tells you that the uh, mushroom is getting really close to fruit. You could actually leave this in the bag quite a bit longer but in order to actually initiate pinning more so and get the mushrooms to, to fruit uh, it's kind of a unique technique. What you want to do is strike it and do a cold shock. So what we're going to do is we're actually going to take these blocks and first we're going to give them a good smack. Not too hard but give them a good smack and then we're actually going to put them uh, in the fridge overnight and let them kind of get cold shocked for about eight hours. Now you don't have to put them in your fridge if it's cold enough outside you can just kind of leave them outside overnight or you know put them on the garage floor or something like that. Just something that'll kind of you know change the temperature uh, really quickly kind of shock the shiitake into fruiting. And we're gonna go ahead and take the block completely out of the bag and put it in a fruiting chamber and we're gonna get ready to uh, grow some shiitake. So yeah let's get going with this. So quite literally we're just gonna take the block of shiitake just kind of give it a good smack. Kind of picture like if it dropped on the ground. Some people say it's kind of like the shiitake, you know, like a tree falling in the forest, a tree hitting the ground. And then when winter comes along with the cold shock, that combo of the tree falling uh, and the cold kind of shocks the mushrooms into fruiting. And you can see shiitake blocks brown quite a bit uh, after they're colonized when they're consolidating. And that's totally normal. In fact, you want to see quite a bit of browning. So I'm literally going to go ahead and just put these blocks in the fridge. Obviously, it'd be nice if you had like a separate cooler or a separate fridge just for mushroom blocks. But if you're growing them at home, you might just have to stuff them in your fridge and make some room. All right, so these blocks have been sitting in the fridge overnight. It's been about uh, nine hours that they've been in here getting cold shocked. So I'm not going to take them out of the bag just yet. I'm just going to bring them over to the fruiting chamber and just kind of leave them in the bag and let them come back up to the temperature of the rest of the room slowly. So the shiitake blocks have been cold shocked where they're in the fridge overnight and uh, now they've just been sitting in the bag for about a day and I'm going to get ready to start to introduce some humidity and some fresh air to try and get these things to fruit. And I'm going to be using this bucket with a simple floating disc humidifier So basically, that just sits in the water. I mounted a simple blower fan that's going to blow fresh air into this bucket. And uh, a mix of humidity and fresh air is going to come out of this end. And I'm going to pipe it in to this uh, little greenhouse. And it actually works pretty well. So we're going to completely remove the bag from the shiitake blocks and just have it bare. Uh, most mushrooms you'll either just want to cut an X or maybe even just cut the entire top off. But for shiitakes you want to actually remove the entire bag. Now although the blocks at this point are fully colonized and really resistant to any kind of contamination, I still like to wear gloves uh, just to prevent any possible source of contamination. So now we got the open shiitake block sitting in the fruiting chamber. I just want to show you how well this humidifier actually works. I'm just going to go ahead and turn it on here. So once the fan starts going, it's going to blow fresh air into this inlet. It's going to mix the fresh air and the humidity in this bucket and then pump a mix of fresh air and humidity um, into the growing chamber. It doesn't take much time at all for the humidity build in the chamber. We'll really only have to run it for a minute or two uh, every hour for enough fresh air and humidity to really get these shiitakes going. Now shiitake mushrooms unlike blue oysters don't require a whole ton of fresh air so only running the humidifier for a minute or two should be plenty. Now we're just going to let these sit for the next couple days and see how they grow. So the shiitake blocks have only been in the fruiting chamber for about two or three days. The humidity has been kept at pretty much 100% and the fresh air hasn't been too much, about a minute or two every hour. Um, but if you take a look at the blocks, the edges of the blocks are forming these really pronounced shiitake pins. And these pins will continue to grow until in no time we should have some full size mushrooms. This is 
day four now in the fruiting chamber. And as you can see, the caps are starting to open up and the mushrooms continue to get bigger. This one here is kind of weird. It's like a double stem. So kind of one cap that's merged together and the stems are kind of merged together as well. And beside it is kind of a weird blob. And uh, that'll happen every once in a while with shiitake. You'll get these kind of mutants or genetic mutations. Um, sometimes that can happen because you have too much nutrition in the substrate. Shiitake fruiting blocks generally like a little bit less than most other mushrooms or else stuff like this happens. And if you have way too much nutrition in the substrate, you'll get a whole bunch of mutants. So this one wasn't too bad. I only got this guy that kind of looks funny. Everything else seems to look normal. So it's been six days now that these blocks have been in the fruiting chamber. And I think I'm going to harvest them. I could probably let them grow quite a bit more until the caps kind of flatten out. But I like to get them around this stage. Um, well, the caps are still a little bit curled over. So we're going to harvest these blocks and see how many mushrooms we get. So really all you need to do is take a sharp knife or blade and cut the mushroom off right at the stem. So just on this one block alone, we managed to get about one pound of shiitake. So that's actually not too bad for a first flush. Now we still have three more blocks to pick, so we're probably going to get about four pounds of mushrooms from the first flush out of these four blocks. Now it doesn't really work so well to pick the mushrooms off. You kind of end up damaging the block a little bit as it pulls off some of the sawdust in the fruiting block and kind of leaves a bit of a wound on it. So you're much better off to just take your knife and cut it off at the stem as close as you can to the block without actually damaging the block. So off these four shiitake blocks, I was able to harvest all these mushrooms. So they're in all different stages of growth, but most of the mushrooms almost have kind of a perfectly rounded cap. The cap started to open up, but they didn't get too flat. Definitely could have let them grow a little bit longer, but overall, this is a pretty good stage to harvest them. So one of the good things about shiitake mushrooms as well is that they actually have a pretty good shelf life, one of the best shelf lives of any of the gourmet mushrooms. If you let them dry out just a little bit, you can actually put them in your fridge and shiitake mushrooms will stay good for up to two weeks, which is you know way longer, at least twice as long as oyster mushrooms. So getting a second flush off of shiitake mushrooms is a little bit different than getting a second flush off of other mushrooms. Like oyster mushrooms, for instance, I would just leave them in the grow room or leave them outside wherever they happen to be fruiting and they would just kind of continuously fruit and I would get a second flush and a third flush, etc. Shiitake blocks, on the other hand, you actually got to leave them to have kind of a resting period. So we're actually just going to leave the shiitake blocks on a shelf just out in the open for about two or three weeks in order to get a proper resting period. The blocks are going to completely dry out and then about three weeks later, I'm going to take the blocks and rehydrate them by putting them in a tote full of water or a five gallon pail full of water and we're just going to soak them overnight at which point we're going to re-shock them and give them another smack and put them right back into fruiting conditions. This way you can get at least another second flush out of your shiitake but that resting period where they completely dry out is really important otherwise they likely won't fruit again. But that's all subject for another video so I hope you like this one. I'm going to go cook up some shiitake mushrooms right now. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.